Deck building games are some of my favorite games ever. It's one of my all time favorite genres of board games. And if you like deck building games as much as I do, then you're gonna wanna hear about these five deck building games that I absolutely love. Every single one of these games is fantastic and so fun for all very different reasons. Deck building is such a fun mechanic as well as why these games are seriously so good. Hey guys, I'm Evan and we are Being Friends and we are a channel dedicated to sharing with you how board games are a wonderful way to connect with others. If you love board games as much as we do, then I encourage you to subscribe and ring the bell because we have some really exciting content on the way for you guys and you really want to make sure you don't miss it. Deck building games, like I said, are one of my favorite genres of games. The first deck building game I bought was Star Realms. It was one of the first games that I actually bought with my own money. It introduced me to this genre that I love and since then I've played many other deck building games and I've narrowed it down to five of my favorites. I'm super, super stoked to share with you what my number one deck building game is because you need to play it. If you like deck building games, this one is gold. It is the best one out there and it's fantastic in so many ways. The first deck building game I want to share with you is actually one of the more unique ones, maybe one of the most innovative ones out of all of them, and it actually does something that I want to see a lot more of, and I'll get to that in a second. This game is called Friday. In Friday, you, the player, takes the role of Friday, and your goal is to teach Robinson Crusoe ways of island survival so that he can defeat the pirates and escape the island. It's a bit of a silly and kind of just fun theme with a really cute art style that some might not enjoy it all, but I think it's funny at least. This one is actually exclusively a solo game. I talked about it in my video about my favorite solo games. This one's on there. It's a fantastic game and it is a deck building game and I think that it is genius. Most deck building games give you a starting deck that is rubbish, that doesn't work very well and it just gives you a little bit of damage or a little bit of money that lets you buy stronger cards and over the course of the game build a deck that works with new cards and removing the old cards that aren't very good. Friday does this in a really unique way because instead of buying things, you learn things and instead of removing cards, you grow from your mistakes and it, it models this in a really fascinating way. The gameplay is incredibly simple. All you have to do is choose between two different hazards and face one of them. Essentially, it just gives you a quota, a number to reach with your cards, and you're flipping a certain number of cards depending on the hazard. And if you meet the number that it asks for, then you succeed and the bottom half of that hazard card is actually a new card that goes in your deck and it's either a tool or a new skill that gives you higher numbers to help you complete more hazards or special abilities that will just give you more control or life or things like that. This feels so much more rewarding for that reason because when I get a new card, it's as if I earned it. It's, it feels like I did something to get that exact thing, and it's very specifically linked to that. And so that's something I love about Friday. On top of that, if you fail the hazard, you take damage. If you lose your, all your life, you lose the game completely. But there's an upside to damage, because every damage you take, you can actually remove one of the cards that you used that round. Like every other deck building game, your starting cards are kind of trash, but actually in this one, they're even worse. Um, most deck building games start with like, you have like a bunch of ones and you get some stronger stuff, like one damage, and then you get five damage with some money. This one gives you zeros and negatives, and then a couple good ones. So in the early parts of Friday, it's not gonna be uncommon that you lose many hazards, take some damage, but that lets you remove your trash cards and learn from your mistakes. Again, to me, that just feels like such a fantastic model. This and, and just is another aspect to why this game is so good. Friday ends with a final battle where you fight the pirates. You have to fight two different pirate ships and the, these, the final battle is, while very simple, very climactic and very exciting because it essentially says you had three rounds of hazards to fight to build a deck that can beat these pirates and you're essentially putting your deck to the test. Is my deck good enough? Does it have enough strong cards? Have I gotten rid of the aging cards and the bad cards well enough to be able to deal with these pirates? And it's a lot of fun. It's fairly simple, but it's fascinatingly designed and a really fun solo game for if you're interested in solo games at all. 
to me, if you ever find yourself picking up a deck of cards and just playing solitaire, this is a fantastic option for you because it gives you a really fun deck building experience paired with a very simple solitaire kind of game. And I actually want to see more deck building games like this that isn't just about buying good cards and removing bad cards, but more thematically it's about you developing and growing and learning from your mistakes. To me that is a much more enticing thematic reason for why the deck building mechanic is being used, and I think it's really fun as well, so Friday is a fantastic deck building game that I really think you should try. These games give you some incredibly fun creative decision making because it has you creating something while you're playing the game. And to me that's what makes them so satisfying. As someone who loves to create, they just give me the opportunity to try something and build something and see how it works. And that's why I love deck building games so much. This next game I've only played one time, but I really, really like it and I'm super excited to play it more. It is Taverns of Tiefenthal. I think that's how you pronounce it. Tiefenthal or Tall? I'm not sure. Either way, Taverns. That's what we call it. Taverns. Taverns is a deck building game about, it says in the title, you're running a tavern. Each player is running their own tavern and you are trying to create a successful business where you get customers to come and you serve them beer and you fill tables and try to earn as much money as you can as well as brew as much beer as you can. Every round after you do that, you get to spend your money and beer. Yes, beer is a resource. Um, it makes sense, kind of. Not that much, but it kind of does. Every round after opening and closing your tavern, you get to spend the money to hire more staff, build more tables, as well as upgrade your tavern to be even more successful. You also get to spend beer to attract and add new regular customers to your deck. I'm holding nothing right now. And your deck will become full of people who want to buy your beer and they come every single round. It's a really silly game. It's a really fun game. You. That's just the basis of the game, but there are four different modules that you get to add on top of that to make it have a little more depth as well as just um, more facets to your growth and more resources to spend and more reasons to do specific things. Um, it adds a lot of depth. I actually, you're supposed to play the basic one first and then add one module and then add another module and then by like the fifth time you've played the whole thing. I played all the modules the first time I played and I don't really know when I'm gonna not do that. It's not super complicated at its most complicated. So there's a, quite a bit going on in this game and to me, it was just so fun. It felt very warm, very inviting, and very relaxing overall. I am so excited to play this more. I'm so happy that I bought it. I found it a pretty good deal online. So one thing that I find super cool about this game is that again, unlike the classic deck building model where you have cards that give you money, it's more that you actually are trying to legitimately run your business and you get more money if your business is running well and it feels more rewarding to do well for that reason. Again, having only played this once, I don't have a great understanding of how much replayability there is or how much um, depth, but all I know is that I loved it, um, I had so much fun with it. I highly recommend it and I really want to play it with even more people, especially those who just like are big fans of beer. I have a lot of beer friends, so. This game is so whimsical and a bit over the top in some really fun ways. On top of the deck building, you get to draft dice, which let you take actions using whatever customers you have in your tavern to essentially fill their order. The different dice you draft are the different beers that you're gonna be able to serve. And so a customer might ask for a five and then you draft a five die and you get a place on them and that's how you get money from them because you gave them the beer. Those are some reasons why I love taverns. I think it's so much fun. I'm super stoked to play it more. It's actually surprising how many people don't really like this game. So if you've played it, let me know what you think and we'd love to talk about it a little bit because I'm curious. I, I really like it, so that's that. This next deck building game I am so excited to share with you is one that I have not played enough. And I've played it a good amount, actually. It's a game that really, really rewards playing often and playing a lot with a dedicated group. I haven't gotten to do that as much as I want, but I've loved this game every time I've played it. It is incredibly fun, satisfying, and rewarding. And it's offered some of the most exciting moments in board games for me ever. And I'll never forget 
some of these crazy moments. This is a, a cooperative deck building game called Shadowrun Crossfire. Cooperative deck building game. It says it on the box. So it's true. Shadowrun is a world that kind of merges cyberpunk and fantasy and um, whatever the heck it wants. It's pretty dang weird and pretty wild, but there's lots of guns and lots of magic and lots of hacking all in one. This game is considered to be one of the hardest cooperative games ever, but at the same time, those who really know the game and those who are really proficient and just good players of this game, they all can agree that it's actually way more about skill and strategy and adapting than it is about the things that might seem like stupid bad luck that makes it impossible to win. So Shadow and Crossfire is super hard, but that makes the times that you do win some of the most rewarding, exciting moments ever for me. The first time I played this game, it was me and Jacob. Um, we played it six or seven times in a row. I think the fourth time we played, we finally won and it was an incredibly triumphant moment and I'll never forget that memory. And then right after that, we are like, okay, we gotta try it again, right? It's got some of the most exciting deck building and hand management that I've ever gotten to play with because you really start to feel powerful and you really start to feel like you have got it under control at some point because some of the more expensive cards are just insane. You look at it, it flips over in the supply and you're like, holy crap, holy crap, that's so good. And to me, those moments are just so fun. When you see a card and you go, oh my gosh. And then when you buy it and actually get to play with it, like freaking hack the world. What? Super cool. It's fairly simple. The game just has you dealing damage to different enemies and there's different damage types and the enemies require you do certain damage types in certain orders. So it's a lot about just like puzzling that together and trying to figure out how you can work together as a team to efficiently kill the things that need to die as soon as they can while trying to mitigate the ones that you have to leave around for a little while because they start dealing damage to you incredibly quickly. It's just insane. You look at the guy and it says that it does two damage every turn and you're like, okay, I can leave him around for one turn. And then like the next turn you still can't kill him. And then now you have two health left out of six or whatever. And I, I swear when I first was learning this game, I often was like, is that really how that works? That's like, is that fair? There is a surprising amount of depth and strategy that goes into every single moment of this game from the start to the finish. This game, the way that you get cards, unlike some other... Again, I'm talking about like the classic deck building thing where some cards give you money. There's no money cards. The way you get money is by killing the guys that you are fighting. Every time you kill someone, your whole team gets an equal amount of money. And then at the end of your turn, you can buy new cards, which instead of going to your discard pile like a lot of deck building games do, they go straight into your hand, which means the very next turn you get to use it. So buying cards always feels incredibly helpful because it gives you a whole extra card you can use the next turn and it's usually a pretty dang powerful card and this makes buying cards feel really interesting it's a fascinating decision every time similarly that makes saving up money feel like a real commitment a real commitment but then when you buy those expensive cards <sighs> yes yes the way that this game works is that you play around and if you fail, you get a little bit of experience, um, but if you win, you get more and you can spend those experience points to permanently upgrade your character using stickers and getting new abilities um, that like seriously help. The way that the rules actually work, the amount of experience you get is pretty minuscule and the amount that it costs to upgrade your character is quite a bit. So it's really designed to be played a lot so that you and a team of people can create a really powerful team that works together really well. Over time, as you're all learning and growing as players of Shadow and Crossfire together, man, one day that's gonna happen. One day I'm gonna have a group of people who are gonna play this game with me often because, man, that sounds so fun. It's not technically a legacy game because you're not going through one specific story. You're doing scenarios, but there's legacy elements because your characters are permanently changing and getting stronger. Man. I love it. I really love it. I highly recommend it to anyone to at least try it, but I really, really recommend it to someone who is looking for a game that they can be dedicated to, that they can play often and really get to know because it's just so cool. Hopefully I've convinced you about this game 
warning again if you don't like cooperative games that are really hard you might just want to look at another game this one is challenging this one is brutal you just can expect you're probably gonna lose at first and then it makes winning that much more sweet and that's why I love Shadowrun Crossfire I love these games so much I'm just like oh my gosh I, at first sometimes when I'm thinking of these lists I'm like thinking about five games and then like the fifth game I'm usually like I mean I really do like it but like I'm not that excited about it then like I'm talking about it and I'm like oh man yeah this is great this is awesome this next game isn't a card game it's not a deck building game it is a bag building game which the difference is you can use small chips and then something else to tell you what the small chip represents um, so you don't have to use the text on the cards and the, just the difference is it feels different I'm pulling chips out and I'm putting them places this one you probably already know you probably know you probably know you gotta know it's super popular especially because it's probably like peeking out right here <laughs> you know <laughs> It is Quacks of Quedlinburg. Quacks of Quedlinburg. You just gotta love it. You just have to love this game. I haven't played with someone who hasn't at least like been like, yeah, that was super fun, you know? Quacks of Quedlinburg came out in 2018 and it's continuously growing in popularity. People love this game. It's super popular. We've just been playing it so much and showing everyone we know because we love it. It's, it's so good. We recently got the expansion as well, which adds even more, makes it five players. So I love this game a lot. The way that it works is that you are all quacks and you are all brewing potions and you're trying to brew the best potion to win the competition of potions. It's like a chili cook-off, but with potions, which sounds pretty fun. And I kind of wish it was just a game about chili, actually. That'd be... I, oh my gosh, hold on. Can we do a mashup? Beans and potion making, otherwise known as making chili. Every time I was explaining what this game was to people, I would be like, it's kind of like a chili cook-off, but with potions. So I've said it a lot, but for some reason I never actually thought of, what if it was about chili? Freaking, that'd be great. Anyways, it's actually about potions. You're buying ingredients like ghost breath, pumpkins, and toadstools to put in your bag so that you can just have the best potion of all time. Each different type of ingredient has different special abilities, and as you add them to your bag, you're gonna be doing stronger things and just making better potions every round. It's incredibly simple in the arc. The first time you do a little bit, then you buy some new stuff and you do better, then you buy some new stuff and you do better. This game is one of the most just simply fun and feel good games that I've ever played. But at the same time, there's a lot of tension because it's a push your luck game. Because you're constantly pushing your luck. Every time you pull a chip, there's actually a risk involved because if you have too much cherry bombs in your potion, it's going to ex explode. So if you have just enough cherry bombs, but you want to pull more tokens out, there's a chance you're just going to pull a cherry bomb out and it's going to explode. And it's over at that point. The different chips do different things as well as just put your chip further around this spiral in your in your pot and you want to go as far out as you can so it's going around and around and you want to get as far as you can so you're right here maybe and you just want to get right there because the further you go you both get more points as well as more money that you get to spend on more ingredients for your bag so that your potions in the future can be even better and get you even further to get more points and again more money simple deck building kind of style of arc it is so fun like i said that tension is exciting um when you when you pull the right token when you it's just unlikely but you pull the right token it is just so exciting but at the same time when there's one cherry bomb that's gonna make you explode and you're like but i have like 10 tokens so like i'm not gonna pull it you always do. You're always going to pull the cherry bomb. Um, and you explode and you're like, dang it. That feeling does feel kind of bad. But honestly, it's mostly just funny to me. It's mostly just like, are you kidding me? Like, how would that even happen? Like, why did that happen? And to me, the highs and the lows of this game are all fun. On top of all the fun and all the luck, there's actually a surprising amount of strategy. And as you're buying new ingredients, the different combinations of ingredients in your bag can do really exciting things and building to create a bag of ingredients that works really well is really rewarding. It's legitimately good strategy as well as the amount of 
variety that this game offers as you're setting up the game, the different ingredients you can use, and the different event cards you draw every game makes this game feel really fresh every time, surprisingly, because it, again, it's not that complicated, but there's just a lot of depth, a lot of exciting stuff, a lot of variety. It's a fantastic game. So that's Quacks of Quetelmer. That's my number two. So good, but man, the next one, you... Oh my gosh, it's such a good game. I'm so freaking excited. This game is beautiful. This game is a wonderful example of a well-designed game in every way. This game is incredibly exciting. And like Shadow on Crossfire, it's cooperative. And so it's given me some of the most rewarding experiences I've ever had in games. The most triumphant moments, the most close calls, that either ended in incredible defeat or that ended in, which is preferable, incredible exciting moments where we're just jumping, we're just excited, we're hugging. I love cooperative games and I love deck building games as you probably know based on what I've said in this video as well as other videos. Let's introduce this game to you. Frick! It is Eons and <sighs> Look at this. There's a big guy and we have to kill him. There's us. We're fighting him. And he's probably gonna destroy us because he's freaking strong. But we are friends and we love each other, so we're gonna fight to the death to save the final city, Gravehold, and protect our friends. Man, it's exciting. Also, let me show you this. Eons End. Eon's End Legacy. I love Eon's End. This is fantastic. This expansion is fantastic. The base game is fantastic. I'm gonna put these away. It's just pristine in every single way. And I'm gonna describe some of those ways, some of the things about this game that are just so good. It pretty much checks every single box for me in why I love games. The art in this game is fantastic. It's got some really, really good illustrations consistently across the board. The character design is really cool. I love the style. It feels super grungy at the same time as really interesting fantasy with cool a cool magic system using aether and um, opening breaches to cast powerful spells as well as using really strong relics to just give you the upper hand. I love the theme. I love the art. There's some writing in this game. Some of the, um, the descriptions of the characters and the flavor text and stuff is um, a lot better than a lot of other games that I've played. Some games, it's just really cheesy. It's just not great. This one's better. It's not ideal. Oh, also the production quality is great. All the components are good and the card quality is, is great as well. That is all before you even play this game. And once you do, it's just insanely fun. It's just crazy dang fun. This one, surprisingly, like I've said with every other game on this list, I just described how it wasn't like the normal deck building game and how that was actually good that it wasn't. So this game does everything else so well that I don't even care that it might be maybe slightly more basic in that way, but the card design is fantastic. The feeling you get every time you play your turn, you're making really interesting decisions with your money and deciding how you want to cast your spells and just casting the spells in itself just feels fun because there's three types of cards, gems, relics, and spells. Gems are those that give you money. They're going to give you more Aether to spend on stronger cards. There's actually a few other things you can spend money on besides just new cards. And to me, that's what makes this game feel so good, despite it being similar to, what I, again, like what I would say is a less interesting deck building mechanic, which is the cards that just give you money. The other types of cards, relics, they're just cards that give you abilities. They're usually supportive. They're usually gonna help your team in some way that is outside of damage and it's outside of getting money. Sometimes it involves those things, but the relics are just like special abilities. You play them and you get something good. Then there's spells. These are your bread and butter. This is how you are going to kill the nemesis because the nemesis has a ton of health and you have to kill it. So you need ways to do a lot of damage. That's where the spells come in. But what's really cool about them is that you don't just play the spell and do the thing. You actually have to prepare the spell. You place it on one of your open breaches, and the next turn you get to cast it. You also can hold it and keep it uncasted, 
and you also can focus a breach before you open it to make it both cheaper to open for later as well as you could play a spell on it this turn when it isn't even opened yet. All of these different things around the spells are really interesting decisions. Um, sometimes it's better to save a spell just in case a really terrible minion shows up and then you can use that spell on him when he does. But sometimes it's better to just get, get it out of the way so that you can put more spells on it for the next turn. It really comes down to what you're doing, what your character is trying to do, and just really the way that the game looks at that specific moment. One of the simplest things, the main parts of this game is doing damage and they make it so interesting. It's so much more interesting than things like Star Realms where you just play a card and it does six damage and then they just take six health. Maybe you do the damage to a base. Like, that decision space is so much more shallow and that's just one aspect of Eon's End. There is so much, so much decision making to do here and it is consistently so fun, exciting, and engaging to me. I'm, I'm just going, I, I could keep going, and I'm going to actually. In just the base game of Ian Zen, I think it gives you about eight characters to play, four nemesis to fight, nemesis, nemesis, I can never remember, nemi, nemos, nemesi, nemesis, nemesis, I think it is, it's nemesis, um, four nemesis, and a bunch of cards that you can use in your supply, and all these things together give you a ton of replayability. On top of that, with all the different expansions you can buy, you're really set for life. If you love this game, then you're set. You're set. This is a game that is seriously a lifestyle game if you want it to be, or it's not if you don't, and you can just play it whenever you feel like it. That's, that's cool. That's great. That's awesome. But I want to talk about the characters. Each of these different characters don't have that many differences, um, but the differences that are there are surprisingly fast, and the play style that that character has is so different. The differences your characters can have is the way your breaches start. Some of them are closer to being opened than others, and different characters have different combinations of breaches and where they start, as well as each character has a different special ability that you can spend your ether on to charge up, and when you trigger that ability, you get to do something powerful, and each character has a different one of those, and each character has a different special starter card that is unique to them and it's their signature ability. Those combined together makes the character feel really different, really unique, and that's why eight characters in this box is insane. Because each character has a lot of depth and a lot of emergent depth and different ways you can build them to play depending on the supply and depending on the nemesis so that you can be proficient and so you can play the same character many times and it still be really fun. On top of that, building a team is fascinating and trying to find synergies between the different characters, again like eight characters in this box, is a lot of replayability, a lot to explore. And like I said about the nemesis, the nemesis a single nemesis you'll want to play many times so you can get to know it, try to des destroy it because you some of them, just, they just make you mad. You just want to kill them. So, man, there's just so much replayability here. Um, it really, really reminds me of Spirit Island and how the different spirits all have a ton of depth. And then combinations of spirits and building a team is completely different and you're trying to work together in a unique way. And then depending on who you're going up against, it's going to completely change how you play and what you're trying to build for. And depending on what cards you get. It's really similar, and man, you know I love Spirit Island. You know I love it. The last thing I want to say about Eon's End is the nemesis, the enemy that you are facing, the who you are fighting against as a team, everyone versus the game, the system that it is using, the way that the nemesis feels to fight against is incredibly organic and it's one of the best cooperative game systems I've ever played against. It feels so much like this big bad guy, this final boss is functioning and it's doing these abilities and it's starting to charge up some of their special powers and it's summoning a bunch of minions to fight for him and it's doing all sorts of things and it's just attacking everyone. It really just feels incredibly organic and that brings the game all together to become something so convincing because you have to destroy this guy, <laughs> this final boss. And you kind of start to hate him, you kind of just want to kill him. So yeah. I absolutely love deck building games, and if you want to hear about 
It's five more games of a different genre of games that I also love. Check out our video about my favorite roll and write board games. Whether or not you've heard of roll and write games, you're gonna love a lot of these games. If you are already a fan, then definitely check out this video right here.